Hello and welcome to this session where we will be talking about multiplayer games. We will cover the netcode options, what a matchmaker is and what it does, what to consider when thinking about where to host your game, and how to keep your players communicated in-game. My name is Arturo and I'm a developer advocate for Operate Solutions at Unity. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions about this or want to chat about anything related to Unity. Today, we're going to talk about multiplayer games, more specifically about the pieces that allow you as game creators to develop and operate live multiplayer games. The ultimate goal for this presentation is that if you are thinking about making a multiplayer game or are looking for solutions to successfully operate it, you have guidance on key parts of the process. You will learn the key components of operating a multiplayer game and also get some inspiration by successful multiplayer games operated using Unity solution. This will be a short session and the agenda is pretty concise too. We will be discussing netcode, matchmaking, game server hosting, and in-game communications. So you might be wondering why making a multiplayer game? So to start, because in 2020, the most successful games are games that are multiplayer. You can see League of Legends, Fortnite, and Call of Duty there. And by successful, we mean by the number of players, but also by the revenue. Take a look at this report. Most of the games that you see there have a multiplayer component, and a lot of them are just over-the-network multiplayer games. Is it more challenging to develop and operate a multiplayer game than a single player game? Well, I will say that yes, it is. Uh, you have to do all that a single player game does, but also make sure that several players can share uh, an experience. It is more difficult, yes, but it's not rocket science. And we have seen a lot of growth on the number of multiplayer games across all the segments. So let's walk through the key components and technology available to make, create, and operate over the network multiplayer games. The first thing that comes to mind when thinking about making a multiplayer game is how we're going to make the game to connect and to talk uh, between each other, right? Like the multiple instances of our game. So basically, we need to allow the transfer of data between the different instances, so different players, different instances of people playing, and think about what objects we need to synchronize, how we're going to deal with the network latency, how we're going to scale, how we're going to prevent cheating, etc. We know there's a lot of passion and interest in this topic, so we have an entire session by Brandy House uh, dedicated just to it. However, I can share that it is key to find the right solution for the specific genre you are developing for. For instance, a first-person shooter game that is running on a dedicated game server with server authority for uh, preventing cheating, such, let's say, Apex Legends, will have a completely different netcode requirement than a MOBA running on a peer-to-peer -to -peer topology with, that, with the deterministic rollback for cheat mitigation, uh, in this case, like Hero Strike. So while we are uh, still working on shipping a first party Netco solution uh, to contribute to the ecosystem, there are multiple solutions in the market thanks to the talent of Unity's open source community, as well as our partners. So I will recommend you to check this blog post and the PDF for more information. There is the, the link down below, below, if you're of course using Unity. So long story short, the step one to start working on a multiplayer game is to evaluate and implement uh, the netcode options that can solve the problem for your specific genre and uh, see which one is the best fit for what you're trying to achieve. If you're using another engine, take a look at the solutions offered for those other engines. Now, are you playing Fall Guys? I've been playing a lot of Fall Guys. I'm having a lot of fun here. And Fall Guys is using uh, Unity's matchmaker. Okay, talking about matchmaking. So we have created a game that can uh, host multiple players at the same time. Now we need 
what? Well, yeah, we need players, right? We uh, we assume that we're not talking about getting new players. We already have players, but we want to uh, to put our players uh, against each other. And this is where the matchmaker service kicks in. Uh, by the way, the matchmaker usually is not tied to any uh, netcode solution or any engine in particular, uh, so you can use it with your preferred toolset. So back to matchmaking. In a nutshell, the job of the matchmaker is to take the pool of players and help them find a good group to play uh, with. So you connect them and then they can start having fun. Now the challenge here is to define what good really means. And it really varies depending on the game. Think about this. The better the quality of the matches, the more fun your players will have and the more likely they will uh, be to keep playing. But again, uh, we need to think about what good really means. And since there's no easy answer, it is important to, to think about the matchmaking problem as a game design problem and not a technical one. And this will be important later when we choose which uh, service or which solution to, 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 to use for our game. So do you want to match players with similar character evolution patterns? Do you want to match people who are in the same uh, geographical uh, region? Uh, do you want to match someone uh, to an easy match to keep them more engaged or all of the above? So um, that's why it's important to choose the right tools for, for this because flexibility in the, in, the, in the case of matchmaking is key since you might be taking a lot of iterations to get it right. So what data points should you bring into consideration when designing these functions to assemble the groups? Well, this list is not uh, comprehensive, but uh, because it depends on the platform, the genre, etc. But you can start thinking about uh, things such as the player skill, the ping they have to a particular server location, the geographical distribution of the players, the player's win streaks, if someone is already winning a lot or if they're losing a lot, things like that. The reputation of the player is also important. The inventory that they might have at any given point in, 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 in their journey, their level, and also the waiting times. And up until this point, I hope that you're now thinking of what other data points you, you will use in your game to assemble these matches. Remember that ideally, this is a game design problem and not a technical one. Even small mismatches have the potential to upset the game experience and to just frustrate the players. And, and, and the, the more complex the games become, uh, with more skills, equipment, uh, the, more ma the more complex the matchmaking process is, and the result is more critical to get a match uh, right. Uh, the matchmaker server uh, can also be different from the actual servers hosting the game. So after we have the groups ready to start playing, we need to request uh, to basically to, to start a match so players can start playing together. The better the matches, the better the experience, and the more likely uh, your players will enjoy the game, stay longer, and hopefully bring new players to the game. Uh, here's a question for you. Have you been playing Rogue Company by High res I have been playing on my Switch. I'm having a lot of fun. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's great. Uh, they are using Unity's multiplayer uh, architecture to host the game. Now, talking about that, uh, about game server hosting, there are multiple stories out there of how games went viral overnight and jumped to millions of concurrent users in just a matter of, of, of hours. Uh, in, 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 in the best case scenario, these games already had a great backend infrastructure and could keep up with the demand. But there are cases where the underlying infrastructure of the game simply could not hold uh, to the demand of too many concurrent users, and people simply gave up trying and left the game. And, and, and it's nearly impossible to assess the impact of, of, of this. So you don't want to lose players just because the backend didn't scale or were not up to the, to, to, to the job. So game server hosting, again, is a pretty complex topic, and we're just going to focus on the things that you should be considering when thinking about a solution for hosting your games. Uh, remember that we are making games, not backend and server hosting solutions. So uh, you should be focusing on creating a great gameplay experience that your players love 
and have fun with. Uh, as this quote from Gordon B. Hickley uh, highlights nicely, you cannot have a great building uh, on a on a on a weak foundation, and it makes a lot of sense. So, when choosing the architecture uh, and approach for hosting your game, you consider the following: uh, Does it scale either up and down? Right, like if more people are, jo are joining your game, uh, you want to scale up. But if at some point in the, in, in during the day they they stop playing, uh, are you able to scale down, or your server service is 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 able to scale down? Also think about the performance, and again this comes with other uh, things to consider and other like solutions and architectures. But think about the performance, also about the support, whether you're using a third party service or doing the you're doing this in house. How, uh, how how is the support going to be for the hosting? Uh, is the platform that you are targeting it's proven? Uh, do they have some track records of, of doing this great? Uh, how reliable it is? Basically, uh, you want to, your game to be available 24-7. Also, the monitoring tools. Do you have the right tools to monitor how the game is doing, etc.? One important thing is the cost, right? Like the operating system, the hardware, all these things are important. Also, how how, how easy is it going to be to roll out updates? Um, how much help is the vendor going to provide you? And again, if the vendor knows about the game industry and if they have a good track record. So there are multiple ways to tackle the challenge of game server hosting. Ultimately, you just want to put your game somewhere and being able to allow your players to connect to the game and just scale up and down and, 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 and allow them to play and have a great, a great time. So you can, you can, you can like in this, in these different uh, approaches, you could, uh, you, you could roll your own tech, right? You can get your physical servers and configure them, or actually uh, buy them and put them under your desk. You could uh, get you, you get full control over everything. And while control is good, there is also this thing like over control because you will be ultimately investing a lot of time on building, maintaining, patching the servers. And this is a time that you're not using to make the gameplay better. So given the time is limited, you should uh, choose wisely where you want to invest the, the time, whether it's it operating or creating. Uh, another path is to use a generic solution, maybe even like a, a hybrid solution where you get servers managed for you. Uh, you don't have to actually have like the physical servers in most cases. Uh, but all the services that are related to your game, they have to be developed either in-house or by using another third-party solution. And lastly, uh, the one, uh, the other path is to uh, use a game server operating platform, uh, which which sounds like uh, something interesting, right? And and, and that's what, for instance, uh, Unity's multiplayer offers. Uh, it's a product uh, with bits and also humans. That means that we have a team that tests, launches, patches, upgrades, uh, and, and upgrades titles for the biggest uh, AA and AAA uh, titles out there. Uh, we, we, we offer this. It doesn't really need to be uh, this is the option that you choose, but uh, it's it's another approach. And this is the, the one that basically allows you to use a, a service that is uh, focused on games and is operated for you. Also consider that in any route that you take, there will be costs involved and that these costs, they have to be aligned with the business plan for your game. So making sure that the game, uh, that the cost of operating the game ultimately is less than the revenue that you're getting, right? Like makes sense, but it's important to consider that. Uh, and also consider that the right solution, the right cost, uh, the right everything can help you grow your revenue by providing the, the base for an excellent game playing experience, which is ultimately what we want to create. Perfect. Now, uh, I just want to ask you if you play League of Legends and if you play with friends or if when you're competing, uh, do you do you talk with, with, with the people you are playing with? So they are using uh, Unity's VBox. Uh, now let's talk about one thing that helps uh, with player retention. 
And in this case, for multiplayer games, it's it's communication, what we're going to be focusing on. Retention basically means uh, keeping your players coming back for, for more, keeping your players returning to play and playing uh, uh, not every day necessarily, but uh, you get the idea. And, and one thing that we have observed is that players who communicate in game have a higher retention and longer play, play sessions on average, which is great. And this is consistent across all types of games. In addition to, to retention and engagement, the other key benefit of in-game communications is immersion. Uh, thanks to in-game uh, uh, to in-game communication, games like Rainbow Six Siege, Rogue Company, or Dauntless offers uh, or they can offer a much more immersive and compelling experience. They can let their players strategize, cooperate, and feel part of a richer multiplayer experience. The technical challenges are here too. So. Uh, 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 things like how to support cross-platform communications, right? Like if I want my players to play everywhere or uh, and still be able to communicate, uh, another thing to, to, to consider is how to deliver a great quality of voice. Uh, once again, most game studios want to invest their resources in making games that are fun to play and not necessarily the tools to handle these communications. Uh, again, not extensive, but here's a list of things to consider when implementing a solution for in-game voice communications uh, for multiplayer games, but also applies for text-based communication, uh, but mostly to, 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 to uh, voice communications. So the cost of operating, again, this is important and this is key to know that uh, the cost makes uh, business sense for, for for our game and our company. Also the support, it has to be 24 seven. Uh, it even has to be support that uh, it's, it's uh, across the globe, right? Uh, also the cross-platform capabilities, you know that uh, we, Unity, the engine allows you to, to deploy uh, to a lot of platforms and other engines, they, 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 they allow you to, to do a similar thing. So uh, you need to support players on multiple platforms and being able to communicate. Also that the, 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 the processing and memory footprint is, you don't want your game to spend a lot of processing and a lot of memory just to, for communication. You can use that in, in, like in, in, in effects or other uh, like physics or AI, etc. So that's another important thing to consider. And also a key thing is the regulatory changes, things like accessibility, compliance, uh, security, etc. These are things that you have to consider. And finally, the development of new features. You want to make sure that uh, new features come uh, and, and, and ultimately this, this become in, in better uh, sessions for your players, better, better, better gameplay experiences. So that's it for this session. I really hope that you found this information useful and that you take a Unity, uh, you take a look at Unity's operate solutions for your current or your next uh, game. So just to summarize, if you want to learn more about the topics that we discussed, I invite you to take a look at Vivox if you are interested in 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 in-game voice chat. Uh, if you're interested in knowing more about matchmaking and game server hosting. Uh, keep in mind, Unity is multiplayer, and also don't forget to attend Brandy's presentation at Unite Now. Remember, all the services that I mentioned above are engine agnostic. So, if you're using Unreal, if you're using any any your own custom engine, you can uh, still use uh, our services to operate your multiplayer games. So, thank you so much, and I hope you keep enjoying Unite. Bye.